Hey guys and welcome back. Happy New Year to anyone that is watching. I hope you had a fantastic time. Because it's the new year, it now means that the transfer window has opened. Yes, Newcastle have a full month to make any investment on the pitch they feel like they need to do. And as well as that, they can also offload any players if need be. It's exciting. It's like Christmas time for me when the transfer window opens. So I can't wait to see what the club does. And I think it's also came at quite a good time. After watching that Leeds match yesterday, very frustrating game. I felt like two points were dropped in the match. Had a lot of chances to win. But ultimately, I think we only have ourselves to blame for not taking the three points. And I still feel like squad debt-wise, we need to improve. Uh, one big injury. Let's say I like to Kieran Trippier gets injured or you've got a Bruno getting injured. It's going to create massive gaps in the team. And we need to make sure that the squad... Not just on the pitch, but on the bench. is just good enough to make sure that if we get these players injured, we can always have that backup in there. So quite an important window. I think it will dictate our season. But anyway, if you're new to the channel, make sure I get down here. Hit that subscribe button. There'll be content pretty much every single day this month. I'm going to make sure I'll try and get daily uploads because there's going to be so much going on with the club. And as well as that, if you enjoy what you're watching, make sure to smash the like button. And finally, let me know down in the comment section what players you want to see Newcastle sign this month. And without further ado, let's get into it. First off, two players have returned to the club this morning with number one being Martin Debrecker. A player that wanted to leave Newcastle because he wasn't getting enough game time. Went to Manchester United where he got even less game time. Got two games in the Carabao Cup. And today Newcastle have decided to recall him to the squad. I mean, what an absolute failure of a low move that was. I, I mean, what do I say about it? He played twice. I, I just don't get it. Um... I mean, De Braga himself said he wanted more game time and then he decided to join Manchester United, a club where he was going to get less game time anyway. So that one baffled me from the, the get-go and it hasn't changed my opinion on it at all. A lot of Newcastle fans have been quite uh, negative towards him since he came back and I've got to be real, I, I don't blame them. This That was a huge moment in our season, that summer window. Eddie Howe wanted De Braga to stay, he wanted Nick Port and De Braga to battle over that number one spot. And Martin decided to leave at the first opportunity he had. I, I just didn't like that personally. It would be the wrong way. And yeah, uh, I've got to be real. I don't want to see him play again. Uh, it's just my honest opinion on it. It was a great sermon for the club. Kept us in the league a lot of times. But ultimately, I think he's burnt his bridges with the club. And I just don't think he deserves to play for us. I, I've got to be real. That's how I say it. But yeah, uh, let me know down in the comment section your thoughts. And I, do you disagree with me? Do you think the Parker deserves another chance or... Do you think he should be sought at the earliest opportunity? But yeah, uh, as for the second player now, Matty Longstaff has also returned from his loan move from Colchester United. He tore his ACL, has a really bad ACL injury. So he's back at Benton now with his rehab, trying to get back as soon as possible. So I wish Matty all the best. I hope he recovers. But yeah, uh, again, that's a loan move. That's unfortunately not went well for the player with a really nasty injury. As for our current squad, you should expect at least a couple of the players to leave during this transfer window. And I think over the next year or so, you should expect a lot of players to go out of the door. Just like you've seen last summer, in order for us to get the players in that we want. To clear out the wage bill, to make sure that we can play on the financial fair play. But for this window now, the likes of Ryan Fraser, for example. I mean, this guy's not getting played at all. He's had... Quite a forgettable time at the club. He's never really had the consistent game time and he's just not getting played whatsoever. So I think he's one that you should expect to go. Matt Ritchie's another one. Uh, Eddie Howe has stated though that Ritchie has quite a big presence in the dressing room. So I've got a feeling that he probably will stick on until the summer. But again, it's a player that's not playing much. These sort of players, when they're getting a lot older now, they want to get game time. It's just not going to happen at Newcastle. So the only way they're going to get game time is by leaving the club. Now, uh, Mark Gillespie, I mean, the guy, uh, a lot of people always always said that he calls a top shagger. But, I mean, this is a guy that's not in the 25-man squad. He's getting paid on a weekly basis from Newcastle. I mean, the guy can't even legally play for the club. So, why is he here? He's just he's just getting paid to go into work every week. He's not he's not playing on the pitch. So, again, uh, lovely bloke. But, I mean, we've got, we've got a cut and loose, to be honest. Jamal Lewis says he's not getting much game time. Uh, Eddie Howe said that he wants to keep working with him, but... I haven't personally seen anything that inspires to me that he's going to progress on to be an amazing player. But then again, you could say a lot about the likes of Anwan last season. You see where these sort of players are now. So there's still plenty of time for individual players to step up their game. But Newcastle, you should expect a few of these players to be moved on this window. 
Before we get into players that Newcastle could sign in this window, as well as players that have already been linked to the club, I think it's quite important to talk about how much Newcastle's budget is in the window, as well as how many players we could sign. Now, I always think that one thing you'll see quite a lot in social media is people quoting a transfer budget for Newcastle, saying, for example, Newcastle have £50 million to spend in January, they've got to sign three, four players. Now, I personally don't think that's the case. Uh, for me, I actually don't think Newcastle have a set budget to spend in this window. I think the summer transfer window is quite a good example of this. So, I think it's a case of when Newcastle see a player they want to buy, if the price is deemed fit enough for them, they will spend whatever it takes to get the player in. So, I think it's when the club spots someone, they will pay that money for them. Not that we have £60 million to spend now. That's the budget. You're not getting any more. I think it's a case that if we see a player we want, We'll buy it. We're not going to panic by and make loads of stupid signs. We're going to do what's best for us and we're going to take it one step at a time. And as for that summer window, they see Isaac available for just over £60 million. They want to sign the player, so they buy him for £60 million. And in the end, in that window, they spend just over £100 million. So I think it's a similar case again. So if they spot, for example, a guy like James Madison comes available for £40 million, they want to spend that on him, they'll do it. That's what I think it is. It's a case of them looking for players that are available. And if they are good enough to get the squad, the club will buy them. I don't think it's a set amount on the budget. And as for how many players Newcastle could sign, I think it'll be a lower number uh, this transfer in the round. I think it's a case that we might sign one or two top-level talents and maybe loan one or two players in. But it's not a case that we're going to buy half the squad because we've already got a lot of the squad now. It's just a squad depth. So I believe we'll probably get between three to four players. It's going to be my prediction. But as for budget, I don't think Newcastle has set budget, so keep that in mind and just obviously be aware of when you see things on the internet. Now it's finally time to start talking about some players that could potentially join the club in this transfer window. So one player in particular, Marcus Turam, a lot of news has been sparking out about him over the past couple of days on social media. So Blid, pretty much a huge German media source, been coming out and saying that. The player is going to be available for as little as €12 million Euros in this transfer market. I mean, this is a guy that scored 10 goals in 15 games this season in the Bundesliga. And as a result, uh, a lot of clubs are interested in signing the player, with Newcastle included, it's been said. Now, uh, the same report is also claiming that the player would prefer a move to the likes of Manchester United, PSG, essentially all the, the top teams in world football than, than a move to Newcastle United or Villa. It hasn't ruled out that he wouldn't sign for a club like Newcastle or Villa, but he's just stated that he prefers a move to a bigger club, is what he's trying to say. Now, obviously, take everything you say with a pinch of salt. At the end of the day, uh, newspaper articles are just going to spout whatever they want out. But in this case, though, there's a bit more weight to it because, uh, as I've already said in the previous video, that St. Maxman is actually very good friends of Turan. And St. Maxman's even spoken on the record saying that he's been talking to Turan quite a lot about Newcastle, obviously implying that he wants to play a sign for us and a journalist even asked Eddie Howe in the press comments about it but obviously Eddie Howe just laughed it off I mean he's not going to give away very important information and yeah in the press conference but ultimately though know, uh, I think this one has a little bit more weight to it it's one that's going to have a lot of attention during the transfer window but as for me though 100% would take him uh, it's just whether the player wants to join or and if the club wants to sign him as well but if he's available for 12 million euros Absolute no brainer. You want to sign straight away. John Joe Shelley has picked up his second injury of the season. That now puts his future at Newcastle in doubt. Uh, as a result, I think Newcastle will prioritise his central midfield role for players coming into the football club. Because of Jordan also playing out on the left-hand side, our only three midfielders are the three that play. So Bruno, Sean Longstaff and Joe Willock. If one of them gets injured, you'd be bringing Eddie Anderson back into the squad or you'd be dropping Joe Linton down into centre mid, which is what the club doesn't want to do. So I think centre midfield is the role that Newcastle will aim for. As for what players we can bring in, Tillemans and Madison both from Leicester. Those are the two names that keep popping out on social media. Now, I spoke about Madison quite a lot in the past because he's a player that we attempted to sign in the summer. I still stand by that he wants to join the club. He's kicking on with his age now. He's been teased constantly by the Newcastle players. He's got that run around the back of his mind that the club has attempted to sign him on two occasions in the summer. We're third in the Premier League tier when I think the Leicester's glory years are over. So it's a position now where the player will be looking to leave as soon as possible. And I think Newcastle is the move that he will be likely to make unless I know our team starts flirting with him. Now, as for the second one, I haven't talked about too much is Yowie Telemans. Now, 
He's one that a lot of journalists have stated that they'd be shocked if Newcastle don't inquire for him in this window now. A problem with Tillemans being is that the likes of Arsenal want to swell and because of Arsenal's success and they've got a real possibility of winning the Premier League, if Arsenal want to sign him, I can't see him not joining Arsenal. It's such a big move for the player. And it's one of them ones where, as well as that, he has quite a big wage issue. As far as I'm aware, he's earning well over £100,000 a week at Leicester, which will make him one of our highest paid players. And it's whether you guys think he's worth it or not. But personally for me, I like him. I think he's dropped off uh, a bit in the last couple of seasons, whereas Madison, I still think, is one of the best performing players in the league, despite the fact of how poor Leicester have been this season. So uh, I would prefer Madison over Tillemans, but both of them, you should expect those two to pop up loads uh, in this transfer window. But anyway, guys, this is just the build-up here before we get into all the stuff. I think once the Arsenal games are one done with, you should expect a lot of links to start popping up in Newcastle, then to start making their moves for players. But for now, though, First day or so, I think it'll be the plans going at the place. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Hope you guys enjoy watching and I'll see you all in the next one.